All right, what's going on? I'm talking to all you desk jockeys out there that experience some form of lower back pain, lower spinal pain, sciatica, things like that that you might have that, uh, that you feel occasionally, maybe even it's on a daily basis. Uh, a lot of us sit quite frequently throughout the day and that's just part of life. But we need to have ways that we can combat the pain and that's gonna start with some simple exercises that you can do in the office. Here's the first thing you're gonna do. First of all, I want you to realize that if you're experiencing pain in this area, it's potentially just a symptom of some other things that are going on in the body. The body is a kinetic chain and everything is connected. So we're actually gonna start up in the top, upper part of the body upper shoulders, upper back, and neck. I'm gonna take one hand, put it into the small of my back, the other hand's gonna press into that hand, and I'm gonna press into my low back, and notice how I was here, that pulls my shoulders back. Think big chest. From here, I'm gonna keep my, my chin somewhat tucked, and sitting in this nice upright postural position, keeping my shoulders still, I'm gonna do some circles. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. And I breathe as I go through that, and I was going in a counterclockwise position, but I want you to get 10 rotations each direction. So that's gonna start what we're doing to treat the pain in the lower back. Believe it or not, we're starting up top. From there, I wanna keep my shoulders back but I'm gonna arch my back. Notice how my eyes are looking at the ceiling. Now I'm gonna flatten my back, and now my eyes are looking about six feet on the floor in front. So I'm trying to keep this chin tuck position with an imaginary tennis ball that's here, but I'm mindful with my hands on my chest to make sure I'm not getting into this rounded forward shoulder position. So I'm keeping my chest here, and I'm truly arching my back, so I have a nice big arch in my lumbar spine, my lower back, and now I'm gonna flatten that low back. Up at the ceiling, flattening my low back. So I would go through that extended position and flexed position, about 10 rounds of that. So I'm still in my office chair, and we're gonna do an executive stretch. This is gonna tap into the outside of my hip area. Once again, low back is here. Well, our hips definitely pl play into any kind of discomfort that we might have in our lumbar spine. So if I take myself into this position, so the outside of that ankle is right on top of that knee, sitting in a nice good postural position, I'm gonna take this hand, I'm gonna press it down into that knee and I'm gonna feel some stretching going on on the outside of that hip. I'm gonna breathe through that and hold that for a good five, four, three. So I go five seconds there. I would do six of those on each side. So once again, I relax. Then I'm gonna press it right back down for that five count. Then let's pretend I finished out my sixth repetition on that one. I would get set up and I would go to this side. Now you might notice like me, I am definitely tighter on this hip than the other hip. So I would maybe even do an extra rep on this side just to work into that. But really what that tells me is I need to do more of those. So that's gonna be our piriformis stretch, executive uh, stretch. It's been called numerous different things, but the ease of it being done in my chair at work, that's the key. All right, so now hopefully you can get on the floor in your office space, maybe even you're at home, where you can do this very easily. But now we're definitely gonna get into our lower back area. So what I'm gonna start out doing is I'm just gonna lie flat on my back in this hook line position, feet are flat on the ground, knees are going straight to the ceiling. I'm gonna do some knee tucks. So what I'm gonna do is just grab both my kneecaps. And from this position, I wanna take a breath in, and I'm gonna pull my knees into my chest and I'm gonna breathe out. And I'm gonna hold this for a 10 count. So I'm gonna breathe in. So 
So you can see when I pull my knees into my chest, what that does is that's going to stretch my low back. It's going to lengthen my low back and it's going to take me into this flex position or somewhat of a rounded position with my lower back. And that's going to be a beneficial stretch that's obviously going to lengthen out all the back extensor muscles in that lower spine and hopefully alleviate some of that discomfort that I have. But I would pull this in and I would have a dedicated 10 second hold and I would have you go through six repetitions of that so that you can really get that time where you lengthen out that tissue. Now after that, you could even go into some single leg knee to chest or a knee tuck position, lengthening it out on each side. And I would have you just do a few of those on each side where you're holding for about that 10 count. And that's gonna really be up to you what you wanna do with that. But obviously that's really keying in on each side individually. From there, since you're already on the ground, we can walk feet to butt. And then from here, I can just drive up with a bridge position, getting the hip extension from glute engagement on each side. So you can see I'm actually getting a fist, making sure that this side of the glute's engaged. I'm on the other side giving it a little tap and a check. So that's feedback. That's me saying, okay, there's two sides of my butt and I want each one of these muscles to be firing. So that's your tactile feedback right there. And for legal purposes, it's probably better that you're checking that feedback than somebody else. Unless it's your spouse, then you're all good. Or your girlfriend. Or whoever. Just make sure it's consensual. So that's our glute bridge. All right, this next move is gonna require that you have some sort of step, something that you can step up to, to where when you reach down for your toes, you'll be able to slightly go, I know I'm a little taller now than the frame, which is not something I usually say. But uh, right now I'm headless. I promise you'll see my head here in a second. But you can see I'm holding this weight. My feet are close together, really just so that I can stay on my box. But really, they're underneath my, right underneath my hips. So I'm thinking toe touch here. I'm going to come straight down. So notice you'll see that my lower back, once again, it's flexing or rounding. And I'm just letting the weight of this dumbbell, which happens to be 12 pounds, just take me down past my shoes. So the weight's pulling me down and this is a controlled flex position in my lumbar spine and it's just lengthening everything here and really allowing me to stretch a little bit further than what I might be able to with the toe touch. And when you do this, you're gonna be breathing, you're not gonna be talking like I am. But once again, I cannot remember the name of this, but I got this from a physical therapist back in Florida. And it's good to do after days where you have a little bit of, uh, say, tension in the low back from deadlifting. Uh, it's just getting us into this rounded position with our back and just lengthening everything out once again with that controlled flexion and just stretching things out. And really, you can just do that for time. You can hold that for 30 seconds, a minute. It's all about breathing through that, just lengthening out the tissue, and hopefully, like we've talked about with all of this stuff, alleviating the pain that's in that lower back. But once again, don't just think that just because the pain is presenting itself right back here, that that's where it's solely located. You know, everything is connected. We talked about the kinetic chain. Um, you know, the pain might actually be a result of something that's going on up here in the upper part of my back, my neck area, and my spine. So treat everything. The body is really good at getting the work done, but in the process, there might be some compensa compensations that it's created along the way. As a matter of fact, there's a good likelihood of that, and that's not just for you, that's for me as well. So use those things, hopefully to your benefit, and I hope it helps.